What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk to you about the curious case of Instagram in 2003 and I want to come at it from a couple of different angles. I want to look at it from a personal perspective and a business perspective and I want to explain to you how you can still use Instagram for your benefit in 2003. But before we get started, I need a coffee. Surely every photographer in uh, in the world has one of these to their at their disposal or something very similar. Anyway, I want to get started and I want to get started with Instagram in 2003 and the fact that it's a bit horrible. I'm going to get the bad stuff out of the way first and actually I want to talk about social media to some extent altogether because social media is an interesting place, not always in a good way. No social media is perfect. Whether you're on Twitter, you're on Instagram, you're on TikTok or YouTube, everywhere has its downfalls and that's fine. What you need to do is know how to use it to your advantage, whether you're looking to pick up new followers or whether you're just looking to showcase your portfolio of images. Now, when a platform is new, like TikTok was a few years ago, it's very easy to get interaction. It's a less populated place and loads of people start to flood to it and it becomes everything's fresh and new and everyone's enthusiastic. Now, Instagram has been around for a long, long time and unfortunately, it is a wee bit stale. Lots of people are leaving the platform, lots of people are moaning about the platform, lots of people say their interaction is rubbish and their reach is rubbish and I get that because it's the same for me. My reach on Instagram is terrible. But what I'm going to do is tell you how you might be able to use Instagram to your advantage in 2003. Now I come at this from a place where I was involved in businesses and social media is basically what I've been doing for the last six years. And although I don't have hundreds of thousands of followers, I do know how to use the platform to your advantage. Whether you're like me and you have a little bit of a business interest and a little bit of personal interest in Instagram and just social media generally, or whether you are all about gaining followers and you know reaching new audiences and getting as many views on your reels or whatever it might be, I'm gonna be able to help you out with both and that's essentially what I'm gonna do today. So how I thought we would start this is with listing the major problems, in my opinion, with Instagram in 2023. And then what I'm gonna try and do is give you some things that you can do to overcome them. First up, for me, the worst thing about Instagram is the reach. It is really hard to get new people to see your images or your videos or whatever you're posting on Instagram because now, if you don't post a reel, it's very hard to get those photos seen. That's ultimately the biggest problem. Now this, this comes to a few things. You don't get seen by many of your followers, only usually a small percentage of those followers are actually view your stuff. That is obviously one problem. And the second problem is you don't get new people seeing your stuff. And that's generally because people are very much stuck in their ways. They'll click on, they'll flick through a few images and, and go off. And that is almost unavoidable. So in some ways you need to get your head around the fact that you are gonna have less reach, less views, less likes and comments and whatever on your images if you're doing the same things all the time. The easiest way around this at this moment in time is to post Instagram Reels. Now I'm not a big fan of Instagram Reels, they have a purpose, I get it, and I get what Instagram are doing. They're trying to compete with TikTok, whether they should just stay in their own lane, work on their own niche, which was, let's be honest, working for them. I don't know why they had to change it, but I'm sure they'll have a good reason. But if you do want to maybe get a better reach, then try posting Instagram Reels because inevitably you're much more likely to have a viral Instagram Reel than you will to have a viral photo. Problem number two, and I did touch on it just briefly in the last point, was is people are getting bored. And ultimately, we all do it. We go, let's look on our app. Let's look at the app. You go on the app, you look at a few images, you maybe like them, you maybe comment on them, you may flick a few stories, and then you get bored and you and you move on. Unfortunately, we are living in a generation and a world where everyone is so impatient. And as soon as you get bored, you click off. And there's two ways to, to, to get around this. You either get creative with your art, or you post reels. I personally think that reels are handy because you can just sort of like binge them, I guess, if you, if you want to look at it like that. 
But if you want to post photos, you need to start getting creative with the photos. And I am going to show you a way later in the video how I do that personally. So this problem I'm going to solve a little bit later in my own way. Next up is Instagram Reels. And yes, I have offered Instagram Reels as a solution to a problem, but Instagram Reels in itself is a problem, in my opinion, because people use Instagram to post their images and their life and the odd photo, the odd video. And people like myself who create art, create photos, we wanna post our photos onto Instagram and get as many people to see them as possible because that's ultimately, you know, we're showcasing our work and we're proud of it. But you are gonna find that Instagram Reels are gonna sort of be the mainstay. Almost everything now is all about videos. You look on Facebook, you look on Instagram, you look on TikTok, literally even YouTube now Insta uh, with YouTube Shorts. It is the way the world's going, there's no avoiding it. It is a problem if you're a creator of art and a creator of photography because it is difficult. So what you might want to do is think of ways to incorporate Instagram Reels into your work, whether that's showing before and afters, showing your workflow, giving people advice on how you took the photo, why you took that photo, how you edited it. Those are all things that we as photographic creators can can do to potentially post reels. There's obviously loads of different ways you can do that and you might not want to do that. And if you don't want to do that and you just want to use it for photos, that's absolutely fine. There is nothing wrong with that. It's personally what I do most of the time. But what you are going to want to do is be aware that Instagram reels will be a problem for you because Instagram reels are where you're going to get reach. And if you're okay with that, then that's fine. But if you do want to get more reach, you're probably going to want to use Instagram reels. Problem number four, and for me this is a problem, some of you might not think it is of it as a problem, but for me it is, and that is having to post portrait. Now, you don't have to post portrait, but if you don't post portrait, your photos are gonna get a little bit lost in the matrix of Instagram. So people will tend to post four by five images to take as much real estate as possible, and that is absolutely fine. But if you're like me and you prefer taking cinematic landscape photos or landscape style photos, whatever situation you're in, then that is not that helpful for you. So I have a couple of solutions for this. One is you just ignore that and just post whatever you want because ultimately it's your page and you do whatever you want. And two, which might suit you better, is I like doing these slices. So on screen now is a bunch of photos which I have shot landscape and put into a four by five frame or a nine by 16 frame for Instagram stories. Part of the deal of this is it shows a better story and you're able to post your landscape photos without losing too much real estate on the Instagram page or the Instagram homepage, I should say. The next step is I'm gonna show you how I create better stories for my posts and better sets for my posts in Lightroom and in Photoshop. So without further ado, let's hop in. So welcome to my desktop. As you can see here, we have a photo. So what happens is I take my photos, I then select the ones from Adobe Bridge, which I like the best. And then eventually they end up here in Lightroom. And then again, I will once starting to edit them, I'll see which ones come out best and which ones I like best, and then we will go from there. I have made a video previously on how I use masks to highlight the subject, as you can see here. A couple of masks, nothing too crazy. Uh, let's try and find another one maybe with a different set of masks. So this image here might have different masks. So yeah, we've got him and then we've got the underside just to sort of bring the subject to attention that one's maybe not the best example but you get the idea i will link that video at the end of this video and then you can see exactly what i do right so once we're done in lightroom we get the photos we want highlight the ones i want right click edit in photoshop once i get them into photoshop i clean them up and then crop them to what suits me best and then when I'm creating these stories specifically, the slices and uh, the crossovers, which I don't know if that's the technical word for them. There's probably no technical word, but that's what I call them. What, we, what I've done is I've basically got this up here. This is how I create the slices. So what we're just gonna quickly do is we're gonna uh, get rid of that. 
we're going to delete these slices. I'm going to show you how I make them first. So that's an important thing. So what we've got here is a four by five blank canvas, essentially. We've got these here, which will, I'll show you why I use them in a second, but this is basically a template I've made. And what I've done is I've got these lines that just come in and these just drag down. So you can drag them into the middle if you want to split your page in half, for example. Uh, we don't need that, so we're going to get rid of it. If I can get rid of it. And what we're going to do is we're going to go here and then go to Slice Tool. So right click on your Crop Tool, Divide, Slice, and then go Divide, Slice. And then we're going to go 5. You can obviously go 4 or 3. We're going to go 5. And I've already added the images in here and I've placed them all into the right position. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them all size the layers and then I'm just going to take away parts of the image that I don't want so this is how I do it I'm sure there are other ways to do it please drop in the comments if you have a more effective way of doing this or a quicker way but this for me is the easiest way to do it as you can see all I've got to do is that and then deselect which control D for those of you that don't know that and then you've got this nice little slice, which gives us a nice bit of kind of, this was all taken in Brighton. All the B-roll from this video is, is shot in Brighton and you get quite a nice little mixture of images. Now I might change this order around, but I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and, and part of creating this story that I'm creating in this post is starting off with these slices. Now, next step is we are into the, what I like to call like a divide. Now, these images will go over two posts, so we need our crop tool back. And as you can see, if you go to four by five crop, this is eight by five. So all of these posts will be four by five. This one will be eight by five, but cropped twice. So what I've done already is added in two images that I like. So again, you've got this guy with the pigeons, quite a cool photo, very Brighton. If you've been to Brighton, this is very Brighton. And this image here, modern day hero, NHS worker, this is also very bright. And so this is part of the story that I'm telling. Now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna crop my eight by five image here that is already made. And I'm gonna crop it four by five, slide it all that way. Happy with that. This is taking a while, but yeah, there you go. So then I will save this image and then I'll undo that, control Z. And then again, I'll click on it to crop. I'll slide back the other way, make sure it all lines up. And then again, I will save that. So that then will create one image across two posts or two images across two posts, but linked nicely. It helps sort of continue the story. This one here is, again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go eight by five. Actually, before we do that, pro tip, go to image, go to image size, make sure this is not an uneven number. If it's an odd number, it crops weirdly, it doesn't work. So just change it so this is a even number and you'll be laughing. So I luckily, I haven't done anything to this. It's already cropped it to an even number, so it's perfect. So we're gonna go eight by five. You're then just gonna reposition where you want. So I just want her a little bit more sort of towards that top third line there. And then we're gonna just crop that. And then we're going to go four by five and do repeat the same thing four across save it control z to undo exactly the same take it save it and then what will happen is the image will be able to slide across like i'm showing you on the example now over the screen i'm going to leave it about here um, so you'll be able to see there what i do and how i do it so that is pretty much it. It's not too complicated, but it's all about telling a story and being creative and thinking a little bit outside the box. I hope you found that interesting. This is essentially what I do to tell better, more interesting stories, create more interesting Instagram posts when I'm posting photos. But without further ado, what I wanna do is give you five tips on how you can enjoy Instagram more in 2023. And these will be a variety of, uh, you know, pointers and tips. Some of them you may find interesting, some of them you may not find interesting, but ultimately, hopefully you can get, gain some sort of value from all of them. 
First of all, I wanna talk about just enjoying Instagram. Just enjoy the process of creating photos, editing the photos, putting them onto social media, putting them onto Instagram specifically, because that is probably still the best place to put your photos. And ultimately, we all went onto Instagram to post our own work, regardless of who was gonna see it. The, see, the people that see it, it's a bonus. Number two, and it is you're gonna have to hit Instagram Reels if you want more reach. If you're running a business, you will wanna post more Instagram Reels because ultimately, that is how you pick up more business. If you're an online coach, for example, whether that's for photography, personal training, anything, to be honest with you, you're gonna wanna get in front of the camera, post videos of you talking to the camera, get your cap cut out, do your captions, basically explain in short form what you're doing and how you're doing it to your business. And that is the best way to pick up new clients, new customers, and ultimately scale your business, scale your Instagram. If you're gonna do it with just images, you're gonna be taking a long, long time to build that business because you just won't get the reach, I'm afraid. Number three, interact with loads of people because ultimately social media is for socializing. And it is a 21st century form of socializing, granted, but you're still able to meet new people, make new friends, build new connections and network out by going onto people's pages, commenting on their work if you like it, or if you find their life interesting, for example, drop them a DM, tell them that you like their work, just be creative with how you interact with people and you'll start to pick up followers, you'll start to pick up a network and you'll start to branch out of who sees your stuff. Number four, and it ties in a little bit with number one, which is don't stress over the numbers because you won't get much sleep if you're worrying about how many people see your Instagram page, especially if it's not important. For example, if it's not your business, it doesn't really matter. And as soon as you wrap your head around that, you're gonna enjoy Instagram and social media a lot more. Number five is be creative. Not only is this gonna be good for your art in general, it's gonna help you see new people, meet new people, get interaction from new people on social media because you'll be creating something that's a bit different. It does tie into what we were saying in Photoshop and Lightroom earlier. Be creative, do diff something different. Don't do what everyone's doing, post a four by five photo just on its own. Try and be creative, try the slices, try telling a story with a set. Just do something that's a little bit different. So can you still enjoy Instagram in 2023? Yes. Do you need to maybe chill on trying to get the most followers and the most interaction? Yes, probably. Unless it's your business, try not to let it bother you too much. And if it is your business, you're gonna have to use social media in a very different way because you're gonna have to hit up the reels and hope that one of those reels goes a little bit viral. My name's Nathan Miles, AKA NJM Flicks. You can find me on social media at NJM underscore Flicks with two eyes. Hit me up in DMs. I'm happy to answer any questions. Let me know in the comments which of those points you agreed with or didn't agree with. Let me know if you're gonna try those stories and tag me in them actually, because I'd like to see if you can create something more creative than me. I'm sure you can. Until the next one, peace.